So from your home window, you have your home button at the top, which brings you back to this. You have your My App Files, which are all your current app files that you have in the system. It just lines it up in a way so you can see them all. Okay, you can search them to find past ones as well. Your next tab is your signature request, which is a great tab because it shows you the status of the signature request that you've sent out. It also allows you to do a resend or you can cancel it, okay? You can see the status is three signatures. You can tell how many initials are, 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 are needed to be filled in. So you can track them. Okay, let me move my Zoom icon. All right, my inbox. You will not be using this at all. The reason why is in app files, we're going to have all the communications of app files going to your Harry Norman email. So you will not have to use a secondary email. And I'm gonna show you where that is in the settings. Okay, just peace of mind there. Activity is everything that's currently going on in your app file, from sending a PDF through email to sending per signature, for changing a status of an app file. This is everything that's currently going on in your app file. I think I just got a quick question. Uh, so, so the question I have is app files, personally, would this list show all the transactions our office manager has put in? If your office manager has put in past app files into the system, you would see it there, yes. We also will be doing some archiving coming up on app files. So just keep an ear out for that. And I'll be going around office to office explaining how to archive old app files. But yes, if your staff has put in old app file or old transactions, they would be in here. The last is task. Task is basically, if you have an app file and you're, for instance, missing a document that your staff member needs, your staff member can send you a task saying, hey, Drew, I realized this disclosure statement is not in your app files. That's what task is. If you're a part of a team, one of your users could send you a task if they need for you to do something. So it's basically a way of keeping you accountable. So that's your top navigation. You also realize that everything I just talked about in this top navigation is reiterated in the body here of the app file. On your right side, recently new app files are just like your My App Files. They're just lined up here and more visible, okay? In the center here, where it says create a task, just like we just discussed, if you wanted to create a new task in correlation to something, this is where you can create it. Down here is your activity of your app files. Once again, it's just being reiterated. The window of app files is not super complex. The next thing I'm gonna cover is your settings. And this is more of a one-time thing, okay? I just wanna make sure everyone has at least checked your settings. Up at the top left, where it says my photo settings and form values, I'm going to go into settings. Okay. These items here at the top are just something that you just need to check to make sure it's done correctly. Okay. So the very first one where it says display name, make sure this is your name. Just check it. Make sure it's right. It should be if you were put in inbound through Harry Norman, should be. But then again, I've changed mine so many times from Big Bird to Drew to H&R Trainer. So I just wanna make y'all aware just to check to make sure it's right. User photo, it's your headshot, okay? Easy enough, you just click on the browser right here, browse button, and you can go and grab it from your desktop to start upload. You can replace this anytime, anytime. So when your staff member sends you your headshot and you put it on your desktop to upload into your app files, this is where you can do this action. So if you get a new headshot, you might want to upload the new headshot. Just something to think about. And I encourage, after so many years, please get a new headshot. <laughs> I know some agents have had theirs for 12 years, and I won't lie, I've been bad. Mine was nine years old before I actually did a new, up, a new headshot. 
and I have gotten a little bit more gray, so I'll admit it. And uh, this, the lady who does our headshots, amazing. So um, you would just browse, you'd select the headshot, and you'd start your upload, and it will replace it right here. Address, email address, and settings. Make sure your primary email address is your Harry Norman email. Okay. Also, a recommendation. Copy my primary email address on all emails sent through app files. Do this to start. If you feel like you're receiving too many emails, then you can just come back and uncheck this. But this is a great way of knowing when an email through app files has hit. So if one of your clients says, hey, I don't see it, you can say, timestamp, I received the email from app files at one o'clock. So please check your email around one. It's a good way to be kind of in the know with what you're doing in this program. Also, this option right here, spoof your email address by sending through via app files. This is what I meant by this. Instead of it coming through via appfiles.us, it's going to come from your Harry Norman email. So make sure this is selected. I know a few people say, oh, but I said that I see that it says something about it going to spam or the odds of it going to spam is very rare. It says considered spam. I only know one or two times where that's happened and I've taught this in, for about a year now. So just be accountable. When you send things through app files, check in with your client. Do your due diligence as an agent. Next, email footer. Email footer is your signature. Okay, do not overthink this. Everyone overthinks this. To get your signature into here, you're going to open a blank email, compose a blank email with your signature in the body that you've written, your name, your phone number, uh, what office you're from in an email, move it all the way to the top like it's the only thing in the email. And you're going to send that blank email to this email address right here in the center, okay? You can name the email signature if you'd like, but it really doesn't matter. It'll come in and all you have to do is refresh your window. Now, if it comes in and it has like this weird coding in HTML, what I recommend if that, if that happens, use your browser, go to email.harrynorman.com and send it through there. Sometimes Outlook adds a little bit of formatting and it kind of throws it off, but it's just something to think about. So you're going to send a blank composed email with your signature into it in it to this email address right here at the top. Okay. If I was in person, I'd be standing over your shoulder making sure your signatures went in. Ugh, I want to be that, but try it out. If you run into any problems, email me or call me. Seriously, you can. Um, if you want to write down my phone number, it's right here. It's my personal cell. 770-686-6992. If you need to reach out to me, I will help wherever I can. That's what I do. I'll give you a few minutes to write that down. How do you adjust the multiple spacing? If there is multiple spacing, it's probably because of the signature itself that's in your email. Make sure there's no space above it. Make sure the signature is the only thing that's there, okay? it really translate exactly what you send. Eh, not a problem, great question. You can redo this a million times, by the way, too. If there's anything that changes, if you get a new cell phone, you just do the same process. You send a blank email with a signature into your settings. Okay. Last thing, default mobile view. Totally just a recommendation. Choose the full desktop view. The odds that you're going to be using app files on a very small mobile device is rare. It's very rare. And it really doesn't make a huge difference. So I would stick to full desktop view. Okay. Before I get moving to the next part that I think is really important about app files, does anyone have any questions? I don't want to move too fast. This is all done on the left side of your app files under settings. Speak up if you run into anything. That's what I'm here for. I want to make sure y'all have this. Okay, cool. So the next thing that I wanna cover, and I will say this in the most light way, this is one of those moments where you're having a glass of wine and you're at home and you have a few minutes 
okay? I'm a martini guy, I'll admit it. So form values on this left side, okay? When you click on form values, you'll see this window. This dropdown shows all of the in-house documents that you are going to use as an agent, okay? What form values allows you to do is pre-fill in some information on these documents that you're gonna be using in app files, okay? Take advantage of going ahead and filling in some stuff so you don't waste time later. An example that I always bring up is your buyer brokerage agreement. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit to where the, the exclusive buyer brokerage is, which is F110. I'm gonna click and bring it up. Okay, one thing that I know for a fact that I can go ahead and pre-fill in is my information as an agent. Okay, I'm gonna go over to six of 10 and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. I could also put in a special stip that I always use, whether it's a termite bond or something like that. You can do some pre-filling if you'd like because you're gonna be using this, this document repetitively. I know one or two agents that have certain stips that they reuse every time. So something to think about. But I'm gonna scroll down further and you'll see right here where it says broker, broker's affiliated licensee contact information. This is my information as an agent. I could go ahead and pre-fill this information so that I don't have to do it again, okay? Think of it the same way on your purchase and sale and all of your other documents, anything that you could go ahead and get some information into, it's only gonna help you long-term, okay? This is just a great example to get you started. Cool. Do I have any questions about the form values? Like I said, this is a one-time thing. Um, oh, got a quick question. So what it's doing is it's filling in the information on this document every time you use it. So if you fill it in this once, what's gonna happen is when you open a brand new app file and you use the buyer brokerage agreement, this information will already be in there. It's document related. Okay. So just help yourself long-term. Do a little bit of extra work and get that stuff in. If not, you can, you'll just have to write it next time you use the document. That's what I don't want you to have to do. So great question. Yes, each form has to individually be filled in per use. If you're going, form values are just setting the mark at the very beginning, knowing that you're going to reuse this document. That's all, yes. So this is a one time you come into your form values and you fill in what you can fill in because you know you're going to use it again. All right, so that's settings, that's form values. The window is pretty straightforward. You can also come over to the left side where you can print blank forms. So if you just need to get a form printed, there is an option for this. Um, are we going to see how our client's info goes in somewhere to some all our contracts? Are we going to see how our client's info goes in somewhere to be used in all our contracts? In all of our contracts? Drew, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Chris. Hey. All right, okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm just like within an app file. I'm, well, I'm glad to have learned this because that's a good trick. But, you know, say I've got a new client and, you know, like their name, their email address, their phone. Um, is there somewhere in their app file I can put that so that it gets pulled to each of the contracts that that client's involved with? Gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. That is that is called your master. Well, we're getting a little ahead, but yeah, that's your that's master fine. buyer. But yes, it's called, uh, you're talking about importing values. Yes. Okay. As long as we'll see it at some point in time, that's all I need to know. Yeah. And I know who, who brought that up to you because someone said it to me uh, yesterday here. <laughs> importing values. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. So then let's, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to create a brand new app file. Okay. Up on the far left side where it says create new app file, I'm going to click this. And the whole concept behind this, it's about as simple as this in my hand. Every contact you have that you are working with deserves a manila folder of information and all the things that is required for a transaction. So when you start a new app file, 
whether you know what they're buying or what they're planning to, to pursue, you should have one for that individual. So say I have a potential buyer and her name is, I'm gonna go with the art director, Melissa Gailey. Okay. Now make sure you spell it how it is. If it's a third or a junior or a senior, make sure that is in the file name. It helps a ton. Next, I'm gonna declare what file type she is. And she is going to be a buyer. Okay. Cool. Now remember, app files, really the premise behind app files is how much can you pre-fill in or, or what can you put in now that you won't have to later? So if you don't have everything, that's okay, knowing you can fill it in later, but that's like this window right here. It's asking what information can you put in? So I already know my buyer's name is Melissa. Um, if I already knew what listing she was pursuing, I could put the FMLS number in here. Um, if it's a certain reload type, transaction type, um, agent name, it's going to be Drew Burr. You know, this window allows you to put in information in advance. Okay. So you don't have to have all the answers, but this is a chance for you to put some information in. I'm going to click next. Okay. This is called selecting users. If you are a part of a team, if you have someone that's going to be working with you on this particular um, transaction, um, Oh, I got a quick, two quick questions. Yeah. Agent record. Your name be listed. Yes, yes. Your name should be listed as selling agent name. Yes. What is agent representative? Do I have to? I need to go back. Well, I just selected agent represents. Is that what you're asking? I'm representing the buyer. I think that's what they were asking. Um, in this window, oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so in this window, like I said, if you're working with somebody or you're part of a team and you want them to have also have access to this app file, this is where you would add them on. Okay, so for instance, if Adam and I are a are listings on the same transaction, I can add him by this plus symbol. He comes over here to the right side. Okay, if you're working alone, you would not need to do this. The names that are right here are admins. The reason why that's important, when you turn in an app file, one of your office managers is probably on this right side, so they'll be able to access your document. That's all. That's all that is. So even when you open the app file and you see all the names, these names, that's all it is. These are just admins just in case it's needed. But the left side is people that are in your office that could be a part of the transaction. And I'm going to create the app file. Not too bad. Pre-fill in what you can pre-fill in. This folder is for you to work with. So when this is all said and done, this class is over, I'd recommend creating a test app file just like what I just did. I created a file folder for a test. Here, may I ask a question? Of course, of course. On the, when you started and noted your name as the agent name in for the buyer, at the top of that, there was a blank that said selling agent name. Yes. Are you, you didn't type your name there, but is that someplace where we should also type our name? Yes, yes, you would. Okay. Thank yes. you. If it, what, like I said, if you can, I just couldn't, I didn't want to take too much time filling in every blank, but yes. <laughs> ah, I've got another question. I'm reading the questions. I'm sorry. I think that's the same question that she just asked, Barbara. Yes. Selling agent is the listing agent. If, or it, it's on your side of the transaction. Yeah, so that's confusing for me because- I don't like how they worded it. I really don't. In yeah. the new contracts, the 2021, the listing agent is now referred to as the selling agent. They're switching that. And are these forms information reflecting that new change or not? 
That's true, David. That we just did a training on. I mean, sorry, Drew. Um, we just did a training, so it, it is the selling, the seller agent, and the buyer agent. I mean, they. Yeah, yeah they've they, they've changed the whole. You know, twenty one. Like we'd have to test and we'd have to see and test and see how that data lands on the documents when we and import the, the GAR values. forms changed too. That, that we learned it in a GAR forms class that they made. Oh, the change. yeah, gotcha. the actual the actual GAR forms have all changed. Well, and then. That might be something we can check on the DPN when I import values. But I'll test we might that. Have, Oops, yeah, sorry. you might have to. I said I just took a class with Peter mm -hmm. at Babcock, and that's what they're doing. They're doing the buyer agent now and the selling agent. They said it's been confusing all these years as the listing agent is not the selling agent. So they've corrected that, but I don't know how that reflects on all these forms. Well, and that'll be just when we import values, we'll see what field it fills. That's all. Okay. But can you type it in your name yes. so that we can see what happens? Thank you. Sure. Of course. <clears throat> right here? Yes, thank you. Of course. No, I love testing things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe you should put somebody else's name so we know. Oh, fair, fair question. That's a fair. Yep. All right. So let's go ahead and start getting some documents in and we can test that theory. Um, one thing that Chris did note that I, if you're an avid user of app files, which you will become, these fields on the right side that says file information is an another data pool for these, the form values. So for instance, if I already know who the lender is going to be because of pre-approval, when you click on the edit button right here for lender information, you can go ahead and put this information so that you can grab it later for documents when you pull in those values. And I will show you how to pull values in. So if you already know it's prosperity, And if it's, I'm gonna say Catherine Smith. Just so I can show you how this data comes in. Cause form values does make your job so much easier. So I've added my lender's information and I close it and you'll notice the information is now over here. So when I want to pull this data in later on, it'll shorten, like it will be a great shortcut. Same with your master buyer template right here. If you click edit, you'll see there's a lot of information that you can put in that you can pull from later on. So if you already know, for instance, your buyer's information, I'm not, I'm not telling you put the phone number and email address, but the buyer's name, their um, mailing address, stuff like that you can go ahead and get some of this information pull, put in here so you can pull it later. And I'll show you an example of that soon. Let me see. Let me just go ahead and put in. So I can show you where that comes from. So when I close this, you'll see more information's populate. So this is basically like a data pool for your documents. Shortcuts, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a document to my app files, okay? These documents that I'm adding, as we did earlier, they have form values that are pre-filled in them, like my actual agent information. So you'll see where it's extremely valuable to pre-fill. At the top lot left under Add Forms, you'll come to this window. Now, to get started, I want to add my buyer brokerage just to get started. So on my search line here, I can start typing in buyer. And you'll see the exclusive buyer brokerage agreement is available to select to add to my app files. When you select it, it comes over here to the right side. To add it to this app file, I hit add selected form. And now you'll notice the buyer brokerage is now opened up. It's also over here on the left side under general paperwork. Okay, so when a document's been added to app files, it come over, comes over to the left side. Okay. 
Now, a question I get also in the form values, this is just from teaching this a few times. If you're changing this percentage, you change it when you use this document. It is not something you change in the form values from what I found out. So that's just from teaching this a few times. Okay. Now say I wanna add two documents together at the same time. For instance, my purchase and sale and the financing option I'm planning to add. I'm gonna come back to add forms. I'm going to select, type in purchase and you'll see there's my purchase and sale. But along with this, I also wanna select a conventional loan. So I'm gonna type in conventional and add this document. Now, when you add these documents together like this, it'll merge it together for the moment, but I will show you how to split them and merge items back together. But they're right here together for this moment. I can also move them, these green lines where it says move item, I can move the order here as well or remove them. I'm gonna add selected forms. Okay, once again on the left side, you'll see my buyer brokerage and my purchase and sale has been added to this app file. The concept's simple. You have a folder, you need to get the items in the folder for this transaction. Do I have any questions about adding documents to an app file? Perfect. All right, so one question I get, actually it's, it's a question I get every second. Does app files have an e-signature capability? Yes, of course it does. It has its own um, signature request. You can also track the signature request on the home page every time you send out for signatures. And I'll show you exactly where this is. So say I have my buyer brokerage and it has been signed and it is ready to be sent for signatures. I'm gonna open my buyer brokerage and you'll see in the center here, request signature. You can also sign now for yourself as well. The process is simple. I'm gonna click on the signature request option. Oh, I got a quick question. What about our, um, is it attached it's to, here, hold on one second. Is it attached to app files to F201 or separately? And what you're showing are GAR forms. Uh, wire fraud and all uh, the wire fraud, fraud documents and all those documents that usually come with the um, transactions are included. They are they are lumped together on these um, on these documents I'm bringing in. Everything you need to close to uh, complete a transaction is inside of this app file system. When you add two or more documents at the same time, it combines them under one heading, right? That is correct, John. Yes, and you can change your heading or you can split your, those two documents apart and name them as well. I'll show you what the document looks like to better understand this, Lori. Perfect. All right, so I'm starting a signature request. I'm gonna hit start a signature request after I hit the blue button. Okay, in this window, you will need to put in the person's full name, whether it's a senior or a junior. So I'm gonna put in Melissa's name. Okay, and I'm going to select buyer signature one. Now, the reason why this is, a, is so important is because it's different than our docs. If you also need her husband Doug's signature, you would need to run the signature request a second time. And when you run it a second time, you will select buyer signature two. So there's two separate signature requests rather than going through a cycle. To me, honestly, it's beneficial because you can track them separately. So you know when Melissa has signed and you can say, hey, I've noticed Doug has not signed yet. So, it's the, it's the major difference between it and RDocs. It runs smoothly though. If you want to test how this works, I would recommend when you do a test app file, send a signature request to yourself so you see how it comes in, so you know what to tell your clients. Got a quick question. What if you want the brokerage and financing form signed in the same request? You would make sure the documents are already merged, Chris. 
and I'll show you how to merge the documents. Okay, so this request is going for buyer signature for just Melissa, and I will click next. If you need to enforce a brokerage engagement date and time for a buyer brokerage, you probably will not because you have a, you should have a solid relationship with your buyer, but you could activate this. You would click next. And then it brings you to the actual new signature request email that's going to go to your, uh, your client. Perfect. In this window, you need her email address. I'm gonna put in mine just to, so that it sends out correctly. Also, in this window, you can write anything you need to write, whether you're saying, you know, it was great taking you, Melissa, out and viewing the listings that you had in mind. Uh, please click on the link below to sign the buyer brokerage. The one thing you do not do is you do not touch this link because that's the link to the actual request for signature. Everything else can be modified. Uh, so the, the question that I received is what is the best practice for which GAR forms to merge with a buyer brokerage agreement? Can anyone answer that for me for best practices? Because most documents are pretty much included with the buyer brokerage agreement. Is anything, is there, does anyone have any recommendations for anything that's added besides what's already merged with buyer brokerage? that aren't already attached is the question I'm, I'm assuming. The, those should already be included if in the, um, attached the documents here. I'm gonna go back to the document and I'll show it to you. Yeah, I was told that I needed to add like the hazard, the flood, the termite, the ABC. Those, those are already attached in a part of it. Okay, cause I was told they were not. I, I did a test form and it was reviewed mm -hmm. and I was told that I needed to go back and add those documents. Hmm, interesting. I know it's here. Let me send off the signature request to, to finish this. If you have somebody who's also a user on this app file, you can select them so they also know that the um, signature request is going out and then you request signature. Okay, I'm gonna go back and check this. But once again, I've sent off a signature request for the buyer brokerage to Melissa. If I needed to send it to Doug as well, I could start the signature request here, select Doug and select buyer signature two. And that's how you would do two different signatures out. Here's the status right here. And I just received the signature request in my email. <laughs> All right. Because when you, if you haven't already noticed, in the actual title of this document, it has the ABD anti-fraud in the title itself already. So that means it's included in these documents. See, scam artists steal your money, protect yourself. So I wonder why they asked you to add them on. There's the ABCs right there. Did you use a different document rather than the exclusive buyer brokerage? And I will go back to make sure it has that specific title. But when I like, I have an app file that's in there now that is literally waiting because I don't know how to add those additional documents. Huh. Um, and so, if you go back up where it has the check boxes for the GAR forms on the actual buyer brokerage agreement that oh. you're just using. Sure. You have all of those additional options of which forms to include. So um, I think with the first one being the ABC zone. Mm -hmm. Can you scroll to the... Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Can you scroll to where you can select additional GAR forms? See right there. Mm -hmm. So like the ABCs of agency, I selected that and the lead-based paint and those forms don't come up no, well, these automatically. Are, 
Yeah, they're, they're not going to be automatically. Those are documents you would need to add, but this document already has these attached. The ones that you have checked? Yes. But is it going to be already that way if I'm a new agent just starting out using it a buyer broker agreement? It should be. Because I didn't, so it's not on mine. Interesting. I wonder like if you use a different- flood insurance and the flood information, the termite information, nor the ABCs were already there. I wonder what you use then. I might need to go back and check your document for you. Okay. Let me write you down, Beth, and I'll check sure. back with you. I appreciate it. Thank of you. Of course. That's unusual because I, I use this one, the F1110, and it has everything attached already. Huh. I think I had a quick question real quick before I move forward. Can I attach to, to exclusive or? Well, you know, so what the question I just asked was asked is, can you split apart documents? And of course you can, and I will show you how to break apart documents. It's not a problem. Excuse me. Now, the one thing I did do is I did check use the check boxes for my form values because I knew those documents were already attached. That didn't change what documents were attached in when I added this document. Yes. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Of course. Um, when you're talking about the F10, the exclusive buyer brokerage, that yes. does come with all of those attached. Yes. But when you were scrolling, you were scrolling the purchase and sale, which gives you the option to X certain documents that you want to include. So you were doing two different, you know what I'm saying? Did I, I thought I had opened the right document. Well, when you were going through and you Xed those gotcha. out, that's part of the purchase and sale. Gotcha. Right? And then you have your special steps below it. See? This is what I had open? I thought I had the buyer. I don't know. Page. I don't know. But if you go down, you'll see where she, if you go down, you'll see where she, where this section is. Is that the section you were talking about? I thought I was in the buyer brokerage. Yeah, oh. no, that wasn't where I was talking about. It was the buyer brokerage. Yeah, I was in the buyer. Okay, so the buyer brokerage, and when you X on that, doesn't all of those attachments go with it when you send it to the person to sign? When you X them? You know, when you choose them in that selection where she chose the ABCs, the lead based paint, the. Those documents were already included in this buyer broker. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So by me, even if I had deselected on the document itself, it wouldn't have removed it. They still would have been a part of it. I Correct. was just letting them know that this was a part of it. That's what that checkbox check part is. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. No, Drew, not a problem. Drew, let me follow up on her question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I think what she's asking, because that's kind of, I think what the question was that I put in your chat is you had three boxes that were checked and that was included, but like, let's say lead-based paint, you didn't have checked off. If we, if it was a home that was like before 1978, and we wanted to include that pamphlet or something about buying a home in the community, we have to check that. And once we check that, will that be included? I think that's no, where- No, it will not. It will yeah, not that's where I need help for certain. <laughs> right. That's where I thought she was going because I had the same question. So I guess what we need to know is then, do we then have to go under search forms and then add it just like anything else? It's right here. Yes, exactly. You would add the document and then you would merge it into it. Okay. And then you would go back and click the checkbox to let them know it's now included. And you're going to show how to do that? Yes, I'm going to show okay. them now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the hardest part to this class is the different scenarios y'all run into. And I'm like, I can, I'm going to cover as much as I can cover. <laughs> I just want to make sure you feel comfortable using the program enough so that you can solve these problems and know to add these documents. All right, let me see what I've got. Um, okay. So now that I've added to the two documents for the purchase and sale and with its conventional loan, I'm going to come up and let me bring it up real quick. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to go to six of 10 and I'm going to show you a new addition that has been added under your special steps. Now, some may already know this and some may not, but now you don't have to physically just write in your special steps. When you click on this box to edit it, 
which brings your window to right in the window. You can also go to your show option and you can search special steps to add. So, let me see. so say I'm just gonna add this termite report. All I have to do is select it, scroll a little bit and you can insert at beginning, insert at end. So it's just telling you what order you're going to add it. So if I say insert at beginning, oops, I've added it twice accidentally. I knew I'd clicked it the first time. You'll notice that this, uh, this special step has been added, okay? Now, one thing I do recommend is if you're, when you're adding your special steps just for personal preference, numbering them. It's a nice way to handle it. Say I need to add another one. Say I'm just gonna grab this first one just to show the example. I can insert at the end just below it or before it and the stipulation's been added. Number two, just good practice. After you've added these documents into your special steps, you hit save changes and your stipulations have been added. So you can either write it or you can search and add it through the new feature that's been added this past year just by clicking the show option. Okay. Got a quick question. Hey, Drew. Uh, can you show how to make selection of special steps to all come up to show from? Yeah, of course. So basically I'm on special steps, the window. When I click on it, it opens the option for you to edit it. So you can either write in this spot or you can add it using the catalog that was provided. Up here at the top right where it says show, you will see the catalog. And it's just above where you would insert. So you would select the one from the catalog, you'd select it and you can insert at end or insert at the beginning to your special steps. Can all the special steps be printed? Um, I'm not sure if that's actually one of the printed items that's on app files. I might have to double check on that. Just so you can have it. I'm guessing you just want to keep a copy for you just in case. I, did I have someone else who had a quick question before I move on? Hey, I guess my only other question is if, if there is a stipulate special stipulation that we like to use, and maybe we have it like in a Word document and we copy and paste it currently to what used to be our docs now, Remind or wherever we were doing it prior, sure. are we able to add that into app files to be able to retrieve that as one of our kind of clauses to go into special stipulations? Does that make sense? So you're like talking like just, I mean, some people just keep them on a Word doc and have it available. I know that right. it's written a specific way. Um, so you would kind of do it the same way you've done it before, which you would paste it in. Okay. Yeah. And then if you need a longer setup, you have a checkbox here. Additional special steps are attached. I'm, I still need to quite understand how that truly adds that stipulation. I've seen it when I've made it active, but for some reason, I don't know where it makes live on this. I just had someone ask that question because it, it technically has been re-adding more and more of my stipulations in a um, like let me add one more. It just keeps letting me add. So I'm assuming when after you've added a certain amount it's just going to add it to the next page, the secondary page. Well, let's see, it stopped me there. Well, let's see, but yeah, so I selected the checkbox and I, I, you're saying I should be adding a secondary page of steps? Yeah, Drew, I, I, the only reason I know this is it automatically pulled something up on me and it, there's, you know, in the forms, additional page is is a title of a form 
and I had to title it additional page one and the special steps. It, it all came to me automatically, but it actually requires like adding the lead based paint or something. You have to add another form into it and it's just called additional page. Gotcha. Uh, yep. Yeah, I've never, I've never hit that max, but I know y'all run into that all the time as agents, situations where you have to have so many stipulations. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole nother page. So it's a whole brand new page. Thanks uh -huh. for that, Chris. I appreciate that. No problem. All right. So the next item I'm going to cover is adding your importable values. So the cool thing about app files is it reuses the items that you've already added to your app file. For instance, the information you have here at the top of the app file is considered importable values. Also, your form values you put in in the very beginning, those are more values you can grab. So what they're going to do is when you import them, say that it says seller name, you're going to match the two together and it fills in your document. And I'll show you how that works. The reason why I filled in the lender information in the master buyer template, they're, two, they're another area where I can pull data in to my document. So if I bring up my purchase and sale and I wanna fill in some data that I've already put into my app file, I'm gonna click on import values. And this gives you four different options to pull values into this document. Okay, so let's go through them. I'm gonna select import from a form. Okay, from a form, it has recognized that I pre-filled in 11 values on my buyer brokerage agreement. So those are 11 items that can come into my purchase and sale. So I'm shortening the work. It's basically three clicks and it adds that information in. So I'm gonna click choose and it's gonna show me the 11 values that it's going to be bringing in. Now I'm going to hit start import, okay? So this information has been added to my purchase and sale, okay? I click done, that information's been added, that's one. If I click on form values, I can also choose to pull from info fields. Examples that I have available are my lender information, my buyer, uh, master buyer template, my file information from the very beginning. These are values that can come into the document. So once again, when you open up your new app file and you come over to the master buyer side, you can fill in a lot of information that would come into this document and other documents. It just shortens your work. So that all you have to do is select import from, um, let me go back, import from info fields and you select the areas where you're taking it from and hit choose. So now these items are coming in. Now, if there is anything that conflicts, see how we, we found out right here, selling agent information, David Smith, it's conflicting. So I've, I've written in the wrong place. That was a question we had in the very beginning. And now that information comes into place. Now my favorite importing value, especially with the purchase and sale, is that you can pull it in from FMLS so you don't have to write all the information about the listing. So I'm gonna select import from FMLS. And in this scenario, I'm going to have to write an FMLS number in to correlate the information. So I'm gonna bring up my matrix and I have an example here of Castile Road. I'm gonna copy the FMLS number and I'm gonna paste it in here. And I'm gonna hit search. When you do this, it recognizes the listing from FMLS. Okay, I'm going to choose it and you will see the form values that are coming in the potential items to become in. If there's anything that's conflicting or incorrect, you can uncheck it so that it doesn't come into the document. Question. Well, that's what this is right here. And this window right here, you can see the form values that are coming in. And well, you I, I just wanted to see it on the actual form. That, that you did. 
that where it's importing into, like the purchase and sale agreement. Oh, well, um, here. Well, let me just show you. Can look at it to see it that it did pull in. I mean, I'm curious. You know, I'll show you right now with this FMLS information. See. Now that I've selected the FMLS imported values, you'll see here's the Castile Road and all the information on it. Also from my buyer brokerage agreement, it pulled in my Harry Norman Realtors because that's the um, that's the uh, my um, office I'm designated to. So it just shorthands you typing it in. And usually if you're pulling it from FMLS, it's normally pretty correct to begin with, which makes life even easier. If there's anything that's off, you would just uncheck it. Could we look at the signature page so that, could we look at the signature page? Well, if it's on MLS, MLS is actually an option as well. Oh, wait, it says if listing is not on MLS, say South Georgia, do you manually enter it in? If it's not, if you, if you, if it doesn't allow you to import the values, then yes, you do have to fill it in. But if it's in Georgia MLS, it will come in as one of the options. Drew, if something auto populated like at the beginning on uh, when it filled in information about the legal description, you can edit it. Um, can you just delete it out if let's say you want to use a yes. warranty deed as an attachment or something? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can edit this as up until the moment where you send for signatures. If you send for signatures and signed, of course you can't edit it afterwards. Huh. That's a good question. What pulled through is the selling agent. David, it actually pulled in what we wrote for the selling agent, David Smith. Hmm. But you see how the selling agent is now the buyer agent, yeah. is it? Yeah. And so the uh, Ariel, the seller, the seller agent <laughs> is, they pulled from the FMLS. That's right. See, it's yeah. switched now. <laughs> Let me leave this window over here to the side. So, do I have any questions about importing values? When you bring up the document, you have the four options. You can reuse everything that you have pre filled in to make your life easier and shorten the process of filling in the document. So don't be afraid to test it and see what it can pull in. That's my recommendation. When I first got into app files, I created, uh-oh, my sound off? Uh, Chris, I can't hear you if you're trying to talk, I'm sorry. No, but when I first got into using the app files, the first thing I did was I created an app file. I went into my master template on the far right and filled in as much information as I could because I knew I was going to import this data and I was going to reuse it. So test that. Get used to filling in your data as you get to know your contact and what they have in mind and just learn how to import your data into your documents to make the process sound. All right. My next item that I want to cover is pulling in documents from a different source. And I know when you're working with a buyer, this is a situation that you will have. So I am going to go back to FMLS into matrix. And this time I'm going to pull the documents from Castile to put into my app files. So underneath the, the photo of the photos of the listing, you'll see that there's a documents tab. And yes, this is going to be under Docs Plus with Remind. Okay. In this window, it gives you the opportunity to download all the documents that are attached to this. This is where you would normally have your disclosure and other documents tied to this. So I'm going to hit download. I won't upload them all because it might take too long. Come on, Marietta Internet. Oh. 
Can everyone still hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Sorry, I got worried there for a second when it was quiet. <laughs> oh, thank you, Wendy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I am pushing this internet a little bit harsh. I usually have my computer hardwired in, so I never run into too many problems. Perfect. All right, so I've downloaded the documents because what I want to do is I want to save them onto my computer and I want to bring it into my app files. So I'm going to bring up my finder and I'm going to extract these documents and put it onto my desktop to upload. Now there's another way that you can get documents in the app file. Every app file that you create has an email address tied to it, which I will show you, that you can email documents into your app file, which is probably one of my favorite features besides, um, you know, form values. I really like filling stuff in in advance. All right, extract all. I'm gonna send everything to my desktop. Perfect. All right. So what I've done is I went to Matrix, I went to Castile, I went to the documents that were tied to Castile, which brings up this window. I downloaded the documents that correlated with the listing to my desktop. And now I'm going to upload it into my app files. Okay. Instead of using the add forms, I will be using the upload files. I'm going to click on this button. And once again, I am going to browse to grab the documents. Yeah. Anything involving downloading or uploading, it seems to be slowing on my computer down. Okay. All right. So you will see on my desktop, I have a couple of documents to grab. And I'm gonna hit open now that I've selected them. And all I have to do is start the upload process. Now, so this doesn't take forever. I'm gonna take a few things off real quick because some of these documents are a little on the large side. So I'm gonna upload these just to show you how it works. Quick question. Yes, uh, of course. So if an agent, if a listing agent did not upload them to FMLS, but you email them and then they have to send it to you as a document, then basically we're just at that point going to save it to our own desktop and email it to whatever this email well, Lori, Lori, you actually have two different options in that scenario. So you they've sent it to you in the email right? Mm -hmm. You can save it to your computer and upload it like we just did with the upload button. Mm -hmm. Or you could just forward that email they sent to you into your app file. And where do we get that email address? Oh, okay. Right here in the middle. And it's so pretty... do you have to hover over the whole thing or do you push the copy button or what? Well, you can either click and drag to copy it or you can click the copy option when you cut when you hit the copy copy when you select the copy option i think it adds melissa gailey in front of it um which might be an issue but you can just copy it off of here some people some agents i know actually save it in their notes of their contacts um just to make life easy so that when they need to send things on the fly from their phone um floor plans come in disclosures come in they can just copy it from their phone notes and put it into an email and go ahead and send it over. So you get two different options. You can either save it to your computer and upload it, or you can just email it straight to this email address and it goes in. And there's going to be a different email address for every single folder you have. That, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. That's a great comment, uh, Chris. I agree with that. So what Chris just said is they, um, when it's, this bizarre email address right here, you can for a fact change it. And I've heard different options, but if you click this edit button, you can make it the address of the listing. I've also seen some people just put their contact's name in it to make it easier to remember. Instead of it being that 10265 whatever, it's now melissagaley at hnbhappfiles.com. 
So that's good practice. Thank you for bringing that up, Chris. Anything to make life easier on you, I get it. All right, so another item that we need to cover now that we've added our documents by adding forms that were already in app files, uploading documents that were saved somewhere else, whether it's on FMLS or just emailed to you, um, I want to show you how to add elements to a document, like for instance, adding initial fields, adding signature options, adding a checkbox, putting a text line in, strike throughs. Those are very important. So I'm gonna bring up just an example to show you how to do this. So for instance, this roof receipt. Say I need to add a signature option to this document, whatever it may be. There's a button that's right here that says edit, okay? What it's asking you to do is to convert it so that you can add elements and edit it. So I'm gonna hit start conversion. Okay, now that I've converted it, you'll notice that it's given you some elements on the left side of the document to add, okay? So first thing, a text line. So if I wanted to make this an exhibit A, I'm going to select this button that says text and I'm gonna bring my cursor over to my document and I'm gonna click down, okay? Say I want this to be exhibit A. I can align it, I can make the font larger, I can bold it. That's the options you have for this particular element and I am going to create, okay? So I've added a text field here. Now, one thing you can do now that this text field is here, you can move it. So I'm gonna click once on it, and now I can move it wherever I need to move. And I'm extremely OCD, so I'd be trying my best to get this right in the center if I could. You can also change the elements again, if you wanna give it bold, if you hadn't done that. You also can delete the element now that it's selected and it's yellow. I'm gonna click off and it's fine, it's been added. Other items you can add, you can add a paragraph, a checkbox. If you're adding initial field, you will select the role of the initial field. For instance, a buyer initial. You can add a display date, display time, but you can click place initial, put your cursor on the document and click down, which will add the initial field. Now, once again, you click it once, you can move that item wherever you want, and you can also delete the item. Just as easy as that. So buyer initial is the role, place item down. This can also be done with the signature. Buyer signature is the role. You can do a display date and time, click place signature, put your cursor on your document and click down. It's a lot of fun. I recommend bringing up a document when you're you know, out of this class and just test putting these items down. Also, same can be done with the strike throughs, single line strike through. Say I don't want this address. I'm gonna click down, which adds a strike through. I'm gonna click it once. Now I can drag the length of it. Do I have any questions about adding elements to a document? Every page, even the ones that are merge, merged, have the ability to add elements. I'm gonna hit close and you'll notice this document now has the elements I added. This button is available. It's pretty fun when you first test it. I won't lie, I had a lot of fun with it. All right. All right, so the next thing on my list is merging and splitting documents. Very important, very easy to do. On your app file, on the far left side where it says merge paperwork, I'm gonna click down and it shows you the documents that are tied to this app file, okay? So say I want to merge my purchase and sale and say just some of these documents right here. Okay, so it's added them all over here on the right side. You can also change the order by this right here, moving the item. And you can also rename this new form right here on this line. 
Now I'll come back to naming conventions in just a second, but these documents are now being merged. Merge selected items. Quick question, can you show us how to move it? Are you literally just dragging it up? Like if you want it in the first position or? Yeah, of course. Like that? Yeah, and no, no problem. That, and that just means that it'll show if you wanted something that's at the bottom and you wanted it to be first, then when it comes up, it will just be the first position. Well, Laura, I'm gonna show you many ways of moving this document too. There, there's actually several ways to do this. It's pretty great. So now the, the document's now been merged, okay? Just as quick as I just merged it, I can split my forms right back apart. So I'm gonna click split forms. This doc, this window pops up. I'm gonna select them all and just split my selected forms back apart. And here they are on the left side. So merge paperwork, select my purchase and sale, my loan, HVAC, all these items and say my roof needs to come up, this line right here, I'm just gonna drag it up and drop it down. And now it's the third item. Okay, so that's moving it within the merging process. I can also move these documents after they've been merged as well. It's very easy. I'm gonna hit select, merge selected items. Okay, so now it's 24 pages, so it's very long now. To move the order of these documents in this merged field, I'm gonna to go to edit pages up here at the top. Okay. There's two different ways that you can change the order. Oh, I got a quick question. So the, advan obviously the, the advantage of merging documents is that you can merge the documents to be signed all together. Um, that's the major one. Not merging is just everything's laid out there so you can see every document. And also if you have a certain system that you keep your documents clean, every office is a little different. Some people like them all split up. Some people even make copies of merged documents. So they have a merged version and a split up document. This, this system is meant to make life easier on you and how you do handle your documents in here. Perfect. But great question though, seriously. There, the advantages are across the board. It's all about your organization with your documents in your app file. So once again, there's a giant blue button that sa says split forms. You can also do it here, but right next to it, you'll notice that it says change form order. In this window, once again, you can move your items in the order that you'd like and then save changes. It even goes one step further. Say this page is out of order in this group, your purchase and sale. There's an organize pages button and you can click and drag the page to the right order that it's in. So you can change the order as a segment and you can change the pages within the segment. And all of this is done under the edit pages option of the document. Do I have any questions about merging and splitting? Does anybody want me to redo it? I don't mind, I can do it a million times, not a problem. That was very helpful. Thank you. No, not a problem. Seriously, I merging do, and splitting. <laughs> I do have a question though. Let's yeah. say you merge documents, but then you wanted to go back and send separate guard documents via email, not necessarily add it to the buyer brokerage agreement. Sure. How would I send those separately or merge together as additional um, background information? Well, obviously splitting apart the document is, is just like we did here. We split forms. I'm gonna select all these, split up my documents and say, okay. So now I have all my documents. Uh, and I'm just gonna use this as an example. The conventional loan is what you're sending individually. There's an option right here that says send via email. I would select this and send via email as a PDF, just that one particular item. Okay, perfect, thank and you. Same goes for the merge. So if they're merged documents, you have the same ability. The reason why you would probably do this is just before you would send for signatures, you'd probably want to send the PDF and say, hey, please review before I send for signatures. 
I know a lot of agents that do that. Perfect. Thank you. No, no, not a problem. Great question. When you're uh, question is, can you set up a client prior to making offers? So when you're out showing to be proactive, are you talking about uh, you're talking about setting up a an app file for the individual prior to heading out with the documents in place? Of course, of course. This this system is your file cabinet. So yeah, if you want to be proactive and go ahead and create an app file folder for somebody in advance, that is perfectly fine. Your staff members aren't going to really deal with your app folders until you turn them over to them and submit them. So being proactive on your side is brilliant. That's what you should do, absolutely. Even if it falls through, it's not gonna hurt anything because you're the only person who's seeing the documents and the folders. So once again, very fun edit pages when they're merged documents. Uh, that, well, of course, this has already been split, but you can split them apart. You can organize the pages. It's very fluid. Hey, quick question. Um, okay. Drew, so when you went to send that document, is it only going to whoever you had already set up, Melissa Gailey or whatever, but let's say maybe uh, Rick from Prosperity needs it. Does it give you that option of entering in a new email that you want to send that document to? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. I mean, obviously, if they don't have the the, the actual, if, if their relation isn't tied to the signatures, he can still receive it, but he won't have the option to sign those options, those fields. But I mean, probably the easier situation would be to send through, even, e, uh, through email if he's not signing. You say we would could send to review before we send for signatures. No, uh, what I was saying is you have the opportunity to send via email the PDF to your client to review before you send for signatures. The documents in here can be sent through email first. Perfect. Cool. Great questions, y'all. All right. I don't want y'all to feel like you can't ask me things. <laughs> this is great. All right. So let me see. What's the next item to cover? Um, we've merged documents, we've split documents, we've added elements to the documents. Now, what I would recommend when it comes to naming conventions, check with your staff members. We will eventually have a streamlined naming conventions for documents, but your documents should have solid naming. I mean, especially if you're going to be working with exhibits and what's, which one's which, A, B, and C. But for instance, if you're working with your buyer brokerage, come find out what the um, naming convention your office wants, whether it's the email or the actual address of the listing, whether it's your client's name, get the exact way that your staff members want it because every office is a little different with this, but be smart with your naming convention. Come up to the very top where it says the current name of the document. There's a pencil right here that I'm going to click and I can change this to be buyer brokerage Uh, Gailey and click the check green checkbox to finalize the new name of the document. Even if you are merging documents together, it's smart to name each one in a, in a very smooth manner that is cohesive. That's just good practice across the board. If you have documents that are named all kinds of funky things, it's just going to make it harder for you and your staff members. All right, so we've covered sending emails through the system. We've edited, changed orders. Let's see. Do I have any questions before I go ahead and show you different ways of submitting? I think I've got two questions that have popped up. Oh, no, I didn't actually show you how to make a copy. That's. Thank you for bringing that. That's actually not even on this, um, this checklist. Up here at the top right, if the action, you can literally download, print, rename, copy. These options are focused on the document that you've opened up. If it hasn't been signed yet, you can delete it as well. Now, one thing I will bring up, if you create an app file, you cannot delete the app file folder, okay? Staff members, admins are the only ones who can move them to a different spot. 
But remember, you're the only one can see it until you turn them into staff members. So what I do, what I always tell people is when they take a class like this and they create a test folder, just remember that's your test folder. You can play around with it. You can use it for a buyer template if you'd like. I teach an advanced class um, on app files about creating um, buyer templates where you already have your documents in it. You filled in your master template. Just things are already pre-filled. So all you have to do is copy the app file as a whole and name it your new buyer. So keep, I have a video on it in the YouTube channel if you want to check it out. It would take me a little while to teach now. Um, are there blank amendments as we're in, to pull up and add to purchase blank, blank amendments? I haven't had that question before. Just a blank form, isn't it? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Blank change closing, remove inspection. I don't, does it, let me see if the blank is actually available. That's a good question. No, it's not. F701. Oops, I have it being there. Amendment to agree. Well, would that cover what you're asking for? Perfect. See, I love it. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. And once again, that would be one of the documents you would merge in and then you would change the order of the documents. All right, let me go ahead and go back I love it when agents help agents. That's the way life should be here at Harry Norman. That's what we do. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna merge my paperwork back. Um, select my purchase sale, my conventional loan. Just go ahead and select all these documents to bring together. Merge selected documents, just as quick as that. I'm going to, in this scenario, I'm going to rename. I'm just gonna name it offer. Road. Okay. So the last thing I can cover in this basics class is turning in your documentation to your staff. And once again, it's a little different for every office, just so you know. But one thing I will recommend is try this first. Your buyer brokerage. I'm going to select my buyer brokerage because it's a separate document that I need to turn into my staff. To give awareness to this document to your staff members, you're going to come up to the top where it says general paperwork and you are going to declare it a broker's docs broker docs this will give visible visibility of this document to your staff member okay what i would also do now that i've changed it to a broker docs i would come down here and i would create an update right here create update letting my staff members know that I have turned in my buyer brokerage agreement for Melissa Gailey. You would type in your comment here and then you would select your staff member. I'm a part of the Buckhead office. So I would probably select somebody like Mary Grace and then I would create the update so she knows that I have put the document and made it available to her. She probably already knows because she has email um, updates, but it's, not, it's good practice on your end as an agent. Okay, so you're gonna change that to broker docs. That is your buyer brokerage. Now, if your staff members say to you something else, I totally understand. I'm trying to cover the masses, of course. Also, your final, when you have filled in all of your documents, everything's been signed, it is ready to be submitted to your staff. You are going to come up to the very top right here where Melissa's name is, hit edit, change your naming convention to what has been recommended by your office and you are going to turn it in through new pending now if your office has a different way of turning it in i totally understand but three of the office offices i've worked with for as office managers have all said they usually choose new pending when you turn it to new pending it will be turned into your staff members once again send them an up send them an update 
on your um, your app file, just letting them know that it's been submitted in. Question, does that mean like if we submitted a whole packet uh, contract to a listing agent, we now send that to let's say Mary Grace or we wait until it comes back and we're pin and we're you know we've we're a binding offer are we waiting for that binding before we're sending it in you're waiting for the binding offer to turn in okay yes. it, this what this does is it opens up the app file to your staff members to review that's why you're doing this and from that they could come back with tasks saying that you're missing certain documents <laughs> 